Hey what's up I'm Nizio Cole and with the amount of soulless AAA games that we've seen in the past few years, it seems like indie is one of the best places to find games that the developers actually put their heart and soul into to create. So today we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite indie games of all time. Now I know that there's been a little bit of a discourse this year as to what qualifies as an indie game, but today we're just going to go off of vibes. Some of these I guess technically aren't indie games, but they've got the energy. Basically anything that's not AAA. Coming at number 10, we have 404 Sight developed by Retro Yeti Games. This was one of the first indie games I ever played. It was released in April of 2015. This is a free to play parkour game with a very simple environment and UI and slight undertones of a sci-fi story, but I actually really enjoyed it. The music is absolutely addicting and also works well as music that you could just listen to outside of the game for like washing dishes or cleaning your house or working out or whatever. The game is very action packed with an extremely energetic vibe to the entire game and that is why it's number 10 on my list. At number 9 we have Awkward Dimensions Redux, developed and published by Stephen Harmon, which is a small game that was released in 2016. I would say it's less of a game and more of an experience. It's a very artful game that goes into topics relating to his personal life and feelings, and you can definitely tell that there was a human behind it. Although there is less to do compared to some of the other games on this list, ADR does a really good job at portraying the human emotion that was used to drive the game, and that's why I love it. I will also say that it is a very strange and surreal real and sometimes even creepy game at some point, so if that's your thing then you'll definitely like this game. At number 8 we have Marie's Room, developed by Like Charlie and released in April of 2018. If you're a fan of the Life is Strange series then you'll definitely like this game. It's very similar to Life is Strange 1 in tone, visuals, and even the music with the caveat that it is a lot shorter. It even tells you when you launch the game that it's meant to be played in one sitting and therefore does not have any save points. That's something that I really love about this game is that it comes to tell a story and doesn't overstay its welcome. It's something that you don't necessarily have to have previous experience with games to experience it, as similar to Awkward Dimensions Redux in the sense of it's more of an experience trying to tell a story, where you just so happen to be able to control the player. The story of the game takes place in a single room, but just throughout time. You learn about the story through different interactables in the environment, like her diary and different items in the room. So if you're a fan of short narrative games, I would definitely recommend this one. At number 7 we have Space Plan, which is a narrative clicker game developed by Jake Hollins and released in May of 2017. This is a game, by the developer's own words, is based partly on a total misunderstanding of Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. The visuals of Space Plan I find are a lot cleaner than some other games. I really love the music and the subtle story that's interwoven in the clicking gameplay is quite nice and it's not overly repetitive as you might think when it comes to games like this. Just when you get to the point where you think it starts to get repetitive there will be an advancement in the story and overall is a very well-rounded experience plus there's potato people. Also one more thing to note even though the game was released over six years ago recently the developer went back and remastered the game with updated UI, better physics, and new original music for the game. Number six, we have Virtual Cottage by DU and I released in October of 2020. This is what I would say the least game-like game on this list, but it is the most helpful and I've gotten the most amount of work done while playing this game. It's basically a productivity tool. It consists of a timer with a checklist and lo-fi music that plays in the background while a lo-fi girl works alongside you. The whole point of this is meant to be a distraction-free environment so that you can focus more. At first I didn't understand it, but after I started using it a lot while getting different tasks done, it made a lot more sense to me. I started training my brain so that when I launch the game and I hear this music, I instantly snap into focus mode. And I don't understand all of the brain science behind it, but it just works. The game is super simple, but it also allows you to slightly customize the environment by choosing some background noise in the form of different weather or a fireplace. Definitely recommend this game if you have issues focusing. It might take a couple times to get yourself acclimated, but once you do, it only builds on itself and increases your focus each time. At number 5 we have Earth X, which is another clicker game developed by Dennis and Rye and released in July of this year. Previously it was in early access and that was where the majority of my playtime comes from, 
but this game is incredibly in-depth compared to some other clicker games. I talked about it recently in my Game Vault episode, which is basically a series where I go through my Steam library and play all the games that have been on my playlist for a while. The basic gist of it is that EarthX is a game that mirrors a real life company called SpaceX in its development, where you have to develop launch vehicles through R&D, accept launch contracts, deal with failures, and manage your company finances. Eventually, you will terraform Mars. One thing I will say is that it is extremely addicting, and the soundtrack just plays into that, to the point where I'll have to rip myself away from the game. But if you love super addicting clicker games, then I definitely recommend you play this one. For number four, we have XO1, which was developed by Expletive and released in November of 2021. This is a game that I think is best described as a mix between Elite Dangerous and Flappy Bird. I get that doesn't really paint a good picture, but you can see by the gameplay, it's pretty difficult to describe. I think there's a subtle storyline, but it's much more about the gameplay. And this is definitely one of those games where you can just turn off your brain and have fun. XO1 is one of the most beautiful games that I've ever played as well as one of the most abstract games I've ever played. All of the visual effects and the levels and the sound effects just feel absolutely unreal. You basically control this ball, which also turns into a spaceship, and it's all about gaining momentum while flying through the air, where you have to collect these energy things. Again, I get this isn't a very good explanation, but honestly, it's something you kind of just have to play for yourself and experience yourself. It is a very satisfying game to play, especially while watching a stream or a video in the background or just to relax after a long day. Coming in at number three, we have Orwell Keeping an Eye on You, which was developed by Osmotic Studios and released in October of 2016. This is what I think you would call a point and click adventure game where you play as a digital investigator working for the government of a fictional country called The Nation, solving mysteries and bringing people to justice at first you might think you might not be able to get that much emotion out of a game like this, but I will tell you firsthand, my heart dropped a couple moments in this game and I didn't know how to react. I won't say much more other than you should definitely play it, but there is a lot of reading so you should be prepared for that. At number 2 we have Oxenfree, which is a game developed by Night School Studio and released in January 2016. In this game you play as a character called Alex, you and a couple friends go to an island to have a good time, but it turns into the most insane night of all time. So much crazy paranormal stuff happens, and I think it's a game that tells an amazing story, the soundtrack is phenomenal, the art is great, but the character interactions are the main thing that I love about this game. The characters feel like real people and all the dialogue feels like actual conversations and not written by some 50 year old who has no idea how teenagers talk. There's some really crazy stuff that happens later on in the story but I don't want to spoil anything. It's really something you have to play yourself. And for my number one favorite indie game of all time, we have Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds was developed by Mobius Digital and released in 2019. I don't even know where to start. I'm absolutely not gonna talk about the story because it's brilliant and innovative in a way that no other game that I've played has been. All I'll say is that the story slowly reveals itself to you over time. This is the best exploration game I've ever played, hands down. Despite the world actually not being that big, it takes place inside of a miniature solar system and you have this ship where you can fly around and talk to all of your fellow fish people species. The art is really pretty, soundtrack is amazing, and the devs poured their heart and soul into this game and it definitely pays off. The main mechanic is a time loop and you have to figure out how to get out of it. That's all I'll say, you just need to play it. It's 40% off on Steam right now. So I highly recommend that you get it. You might get stuck in a couple of areas, but it's definitely worth the time to figure out. So those are my top 10 favorite indie games of all time. Let me know what you thought about this video. Have you played any of these games? Would you get them? Let me know. Also, I wanna hear your top five or top 10 indie games down in the comment section below. And as always, I will have the links to buy all of these games if you wanna go check them out. Right now would also be the best time to buy them as they're probably all on sale. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.